Hi and welcome back to the Slay the Spire tutorial series. This is episode number 22. You all wanted me to extend the series by the status effect system and here we are. In this episode we will create the UI for the status effect system. Let's go! To start things off, let's create our status effect type class. This will be an enum and located in the new enum folder in the scripts folder. This class will represent the type of the status effect. For now, we will have armor and burn. You can extend this class with other status effects, but for now this is enough to build the system. Next, let's start with the UI for the system. We will need two scripts for the UI. The status effect UI script and the status effects UI script. The first will represent a single status effect like armor or burn and how many stacks they have. The second class will keep track of all the status effect UIs that we have for a particular character. Let's start with the status effect UI. Here we will need two serialized fields. One for the UI image that will hold our icon and one for the text mesh pro which will display the stack count. We also need a set method which will take a sprite and a stack count and will set the elements accordingly. In the status effects UI script we also need a few serialized fields. Here we need the status effect UI prefab and references to our sprites for our status effects. We also need a private dictionary in which we can hold a status effect UI for each type we have. Then we will also have an update method. In this case we will have no add or remove method, but just one method that will get the updated stack count for a type and will handle the display logic from there. If we have a stack count of 0, we want to remove the UI if there is one. So first we check if there is a UI and if there is one we remove and destroy it. If we have no UI, we just do nothing here. If the stack count is not zero, we can check if there is no UI. If we don't have the UI, we create it first and add it to the dictionary. Then we need the correct sprite. For this let's create a helper method, which will take a type and will give us the right sprite. Back in the update status effects method, we then get our sprite and set the UI with the sprite and the updated stack count. Ok, that's it for the script. Let's go back to Unity and put everything together there. In our competent view base prefab we can create a new canvas. We set the canvas to world space and adjust the size and the position. We also want a scale of 0.01. This way, if our sprites have 100 pixels per unit, we can use pixels in the width and height instead of units. I like that for UI. Inside the canvas, we create the status effects UI object. I create it as image so that we can see it for now. We 
We want the object size to stretch with the parent object. Then we also want to add our status effects UI script. Now under the status effects UI we add a new image and call it status effect UI. We set the size to something like 60 by 60. And we also want our UIs here to align properly to the parent. We will use a horizontal layout group on the parent, the status effects UI. We also remove the two check marks for child force expand. Now if we duplicate the child, we can see that it aligns properly. Great. For our status effects, we will have icons, of course. I have made two icons and I will drag them into the media folder. You can use your own if you want or you can use mine which you will find in the description. We can drag them into the media folder like I said and then we set the type to sprite and the sprite mode to single. In the status effect UI we can test the sprites out. We now also can add a text mesh pro for the stack count. We set the text to something like 99 for now and set it up so that it is black and centered above the sprite. You can take some time to make it look better if you want, but for the tutorial it's fine like this, I guess. We now also can remove the background image as it only was for testing purpose. Last thing we need here is the status effect UI script. We set all references there and then we can drag our status effect UI into the prefabs folder to make it a prefab and we then delete it from the scene. In the status effects UI we can now set the references as well. We add the prefab and the two icons here. Okay, that's it for the UI. In the next episode we will create the system and we will be able to add status effects to our competence. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I would really appreciate a sub and a like. Thank you for watching and see you next time.